In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. The Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in the same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who opens a way in the sea and a path in the mighty waters, who leads out chariots and horsemen, a powerful army, till they lie prostrate together, never to rise, snuffed out and quenched like a wick. Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago, consider not. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? In the desert I make a way, in the wasteland rivers. Wild beasts honor me, jackals and ostriches. For I put water in the desert and rivers in the wasteland for my chosen people to drink. The people whom I formed for myself, that they might announce my praise. The word of the Lord. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We, we are, are filled, filled with joy. joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those that sow tears shall reap rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have accepted the loss of all things, and I consider them so much rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, depending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death. If somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead, it is not that I have already taken hold of it or have attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it 
since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I, for my part, do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead, I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they could have some charges to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? No one has condemned you. She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we've all enjoyed another awesome week in our beautiful paradise, and it's getting a little bit warmer, getting ready for the summer heat to come upon us. Friday was a holiday, not really for us, but for some other people. Friday is considered to be April Fool's Day, and it was the holiday for atheists, because it says in the Bible, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. So any of your neighbors or friends who might be atheists, that was their day. I have a saying I picked up this week, I'm in great shape for the shape that I'm in. And I'll tell you why I'm using it. Uh, before someone says anything, I know it looks like I haven't been smiling as much this week as before. It's not because I'm sad. It's because my mouth is falling apart. In just a few weeks, uh, I lost a triple bridge on this side. Then I lost a crown on this side. Then they found out that the teeth underneath the crown need to be removed because they're broken. And then I lost a veneer on a front tooth on this side. And then I lost a front tooth on that side. So I really don't think I should smile. Uh, I should tell you though, please don't worry about me. There is absolutely no pain, so I'm fine. The only problem is I can't see my dentist until the 6th of May. And I can't see the oral surgeon until the 31st of May. They're very backed up. However, I just want you to know that that's the reason I look like I was in a fight and I was the one who lost. <laughs> I'm pretty much holding my mouth closed. It's pretty good. I can talk like this. Uh, this week was a special week for the Knights of Columbus uh, on, on 
29th of March in 1882, the Knights of Columbus were founded in New Haven, Connecticut by Father Michael McGivney. So this week, the Knights of Columbus became 140 years old. And from one single council in Connecticut in 1882, they've now grown to more than 14,000 councils around the world with 1.8 million members of the Knights of Columbus. Our Council 12690 was established in April of the year 2000. We congratulate all of our Knights from our own Council and all of the Knights who might be visiting us this weekend. Uh, 140 years as the largest Catholic fraternal organization in the world. So we're very grateful for that and for the services our, our Knights provide. Our scripture today, the Gospel, comes from the 8th chapter of St. John, verses 1 to 11. And it's a very famous story. The woman caught in the very act of adultery, brought to Jesus, and Jesus is set up as if for a trap. So would you stone her to death, as the law of Moses says, or not? And Jesus recognized the trap. Because he knew that if he would have gone along and said, well, yes, you know, we should stone the woman to death. Well, that was contrary to the Roman law. The Jews didn't have the right to put anybody to death. So Jesus would have been in trouble with the Romans. And if he said we should not stone the woman, he would be in trouble with the Jewish law because they said, and they're quoting to the Mosaic law, that a woman who was caught in adultery should be stoned to death. Jesus knew it was a trap. Two thoughts always arise in my mind whenever we have this gospel. And maybe they're the thoughts that arise in your minds as well. The first thought is, where is the guy? <laughs> it takes two to commit adultery. One has to be a man, the other has to be a woman. That's why it happens. Where was the guy? Well, I can answer that one from history. Gentlemen, guys, were treated differently in the ancient past. They were treated differently by Roman law as well as by Jewish law. So that explains where was the guy. The second question that arises in my mind and presumably in many of yours is, what did Jesus write on the ground? That must have been so significant because nowhere else in the scriptures does it say that Jesus wrote anything. Here we have the only thing recorded in scripture that Jesus ever wrote. What was it? And there have been many speculations about what it was. And they come down to, I did a little research on this, four theories about what Jesus wrote that day. Now the first one, I think, is the one you already know. Most people are pretty sure this is what Jesus wrote. And the first one is, well, he wrote down the sins of those people who were there about to stone the women, the woman rather. That's what he wrote, he wrote their sins. So they knew that he knew their sins. And that's probably the most common explanation. But there are three others that are found in commentaries on the scripture. The second one is Jesus wrote out the Ten Commandments so that everybody would realize that and they all fall short in some ways, maybe not that way, but in other ways. That's the second way. The third way is that Jesus wrote a special message to the Pharisees who were there something that would really remind them of what they're doing. And the fourth way is that Jesus wrote exactly what he said. Let him who is without sin be the first one to cast a stone. He wanted to make sure that was not only heard, but seen in front of them. I don't know what Jesus wrote, but we do know, and the scriptures don't tell us what he wrote, but we do know that after he wrote it, one by one, the people with the stones dropped the stones and walked away. It even says, beginning with the eldest. Those stones became too heavy in their hands and they walked away, knowing that they were guilty of things themselves. And in fact, Jesus was the only one there who really could have stoned the woman 
He was the only one there without any sin. And he didn't stone the woman. I don't know, but think about it. What if someone in that crowd who heard Jesus and saw what he wrote didn't think he was a sinner, didn't think that he was guilty of anything? What if he then picked up his stone and threw it at the woman? What would have happened? And I think we all know what would have happened. I think we realize that most people, even today, still follow the crowd. And so if one person threw it, they'd say, well, I'm at least as good as he is. And they would have thrown their stone. And the next person would have thrown their stone. And the crowd would have stone, thrown their stones. And the woman would have been killed. We all see that. People still follow the crowd. And it doesn't seem to make any difference whether the crowd is doing what's right or doing what's wrong. We still follow the, st the crowd. We throw stones at sometimes just because the crowd is throwing the stones. We don't do it because we know what's right or what's wrong. We do it because the crowd is doing it. I don't know. We do know that whoever whatever Jesus wrote on the ground that day made a difference to the people there. It made them reflect on the fact that in one way or another, they're guilty of not being those perfect people that sometimes they wish they could be. We don't know what Jesus wrote there, but it made a difference. The woman didn't die. He sent her away and told her not to sin again. What would Jesus have to write to convince us of our need to be forgiven. God bless you. We stand together the words of our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With great hope and great trust, we bring our prayers to God, our loving Father. We pray for our church and all those who continue to teach us God's message. We pray to the Lord, Lord in our prayer. for peace in our world, for the protection of the men and women in our military forces, for those Christians anywhere who are persecuted. We pray to the Lord, Lord in our prayer. and for all those who are sick, all those who need our prayers this week because of their illnesses. We ask your prayers for Val Peterson, Fran Sneed, Jim Keller, the Sadat family, Janine Kasebeer High, Bob Bushko, uh, Jan Finnegan, uh, Jerry Bowen, and Tony Sedano. For them and for all the sick within our own families and friends, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And among those who have died, we ask your prayers for Gene Hoffer and for Bill Hall. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For that God would work his miracle of peace in Ukraine, we pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And that we would all use these remaining two weeks of Lent to grow closer to God. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. The special intention for this Mass is for Fred and Annette Bredestigi. We pray to the Lord, Lord hear our prayer. 
Almighty God, we give you thanks for all your blessings. Keep us aware of them and keep us grateful for them throughout our lives. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice of yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the, for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all this holy church. church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teaching of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal Feast with joy of mind made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestowed on your sons and daughters. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and power of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory is without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy the gifts ever we pray before you, and that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her together in the fullness of charity, 
together with Francis, our Pope, George Leo, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John the Baptist, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be.
We invite those who are watching the Mass at home because they're unable to get to church to join with Deacon Dan in the prayer for spiritual Holy Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul and body. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart into my soul and into my body. I embrace you as if you were already there and I unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you, amen. Remind you to please take home a copy of our parish bulletin. The schedule for Palm Sunday and Holy Week and Easter are all contained in it and it'd be handy for you to have it. If, since 2019, we've been unable to celebrate Holy Week the way it should be celebrated. We've always had these restrictions imposed by the diocese or the state. This is the first year since 2019 that we could celebrate relatively unrestrictively. So please note the times and places for the events of Holy Week. Keep the bulletin handy uh, so you won't have to make phone calls. And we encourage a lot of people, please come out and join us for the events of Holy Week this year. And also, in very good news, word and song finally arrived. So we have that second shipment of 200 copies of the Word and Song book. They're available in the office after Mass. They're $5 a piece. You'll have them in time for Holy Week. You'll have them in time to use for the rest of the year up until Advent begins in December of this year. Please stand and let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with may Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. God.